Hash is one of the best investing platforms in New Zealand. It gives you complete access to the American market and during this video I'll show you everything there is to know about the platform from setting up an account to making your first investment. I'll also show you some bonus features like how Hash will help you get all of your investing taxes sorted to make sure that you don't get stung with any hidden fees. When I first started investing in New Zealand I wasn't sure what broker I should be using. I knew that you could invest with ASB and Sharesies was around but at the time it only let you invest in New Zealand so the best option was investing through Hatch. Thankfully it's a very beginner friendly platform that's easy to use and anyone can get started with it no matter how little investing experience you might have. All you need to make an account is your IRD number, a proof of address and identity. This can be your driver's license or passport number and then your account will be set up in just a few days. I've reached out to Hatch and they've given me a special referral link that will give new users $20 when first signing up to the platform. So once you jump onto Hatch, this is what the home screen will look like. You can take a look at your portfolio. So the total value for mine is $1,600 and $83. You could also see the previous return that I've had which is just under 5,000. So for the most part the majority of my portfolio is the S&P 500 ETF or VOO. I'm just putting in $200 each month or $50 a week into this with an automatic payment. So a very passive investing strategy. Before this I was investing mainly into Tesla and if we scroll up and take a look at my previous portfolio at its peak it was worth $29,000 and I'll be honest there was a bit of GameStop in there and I did make a bit of a return from that so as we go on through the portfolio you can see that the price changes were pretty up and down sometimes going from that $29,000 all the way down to $20,000 and then eventually I sold all of my Tesla stock and that's what I ultimately used for a deposit on my first home. Now that house has been pretty expensive and there were a lot of renovations and work that were needed to get it up to scratch. So now that I've got a bit more money set aside for investing, I'm just slowly building up a portfolio that's gonna be mainly the S&P 500. If we take a look at the browse feature on Hatch, we can look at either individual companies all ETFs as well so if we click on companies it's going to bring up all of the main players that you would associate with the American market like Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft and the list goes on. So in terms of organizing the companies we can take a look at the filters so you can look at the dividends the market cap or the total size of the business on the home screen it's going to display the stocks based on their popularity. If we want to take a look at some ETFs, we can click on that option as well. And then it's gonna show us some of the most popular ones. The majority of them are made by Vanguard. So you can see the S&P 500 here, that's the one that I'm mainly buying. And then there's the Vanguard Growth Fund, the Total Stock Market Index, and then there's a few others as well. So let's say we wanted to invest in the S&P 500 ETF. So I've got 430 New Zealand dollars available for this and that's what I'll be putting into the stock. So we'll just click on the browse option, go to ETFs and then we'll click on the S&P 500 Vanguard ETF. So you can also search for that as well if it doesn't come up straight away. So we'll click on the investment and then it's going to show us a bit of statistical information about it. So you can take a look at all the price changes that it's had. So initially over one day, three months, one year, and then there's also five years as well. So then you can get a really good idea of what the price performance has been of that investment over several years at a time. And then if you scroll down, it's going to show you the open high and low or the lowest and highest price for that stock and then also the market cap as well sitting at 325 billion and if a company offers a dividend it's going to show that down here as well so you can see for vanguard it's 1.52 percent and then it'll give you a bit of a summary about the stock as well so if you are wanting to buy this click on the buy option 
But first, before you do that, you're going to need to top up your account. So the main way that you do this is through a bank transfer. And this is exactly the same as transferring one of your friends using internet banking. So if you want to top up your account, just go into the top right corner here and then click on deposit. So if you scroll down from here, it's going to have a bank account number to transfer to that's specific to Hatch and it's going to have a reference number that's unique to your Hatch profile. So save this as a PayYE on your internet banking app and this is how you're going to top up your account. So it normally will take about one to three business days for your transaction to show up in your account. It's not instant, it does take a few days for this to get processed. And at the top here, it's going to show you the fee that you'll be charged for topping up your account. So for Hatch, the foreign exchange fee for converting your New Zealand dollar into the American dollar is 0.5%. So to put that into context, if you invest $1,000 into Hatch, you'll be charged $5 for this. It's pretty cheap overall and it's the standard amongst all investing platforms. So now that you've funded your account, there's going to be a few different buying options available. And the first one is market buy. So when you select market buy, it basically means that you're buying the shares of that company at the set market price. So if we go back to VOO, its current value is $401. So if you click on market buy, you're going to be purchasing VOO at that exact price of $401. And market buy is what the majority of people will go with. And it's the easiest option when you're just buying a stock as a one-off investment. Then there's also an auto investment. And this is personally what I do for VOO. And I just put in a set amount of money. So mine is the equivalent of 200 New Zealand dollars per week. So you enter the amount, put in how often you want this to happen. And something really important to keep in mind to cut down the fees is that you want this to ideally be, if it's going to be a dollar cost averaging strategy where you're just routinely investing into one stock, then you want to make sure it's ideally on a monthly basis. Because with Hatch, every time you invest, you're going to be charged three US dollars in fees. Now this is about $4.20 to $4.50 NZD. So if we just keep it simple and say that it's four New Zealand dollars every time you invest, that means in a year, if you're investing every week, that's gonna be over $200 NZD in fees that you'll be paying versus if you invest every single month, that's only gonna be $48 in fees. So the cost can really add up if you don't make sure that you're investing on a monthly basis because every time you invest you're going to be charged a brokerage fee which is just basically the cost that you have to cover to make an investment and there's a brokerage charge whenever you buy a stock and whenever you sell it and it's a flat fee of three US dollars no matter how much or how little you're investing if you're investing ten thousand dollars at once you're going to be charged a flat fee of three US dollars and if you're investing five dollars you're going to be charged three USD for that as well so out of all of these options we'll go with market buy so I'll click on it here and then we'll invest the funds that we have available. So 255 US dollars and then we'll click on review market buy order. And you can see there's the three USD fee here at the top for the transaction. So we click on review market buy order. It's going to have a summary of the order for us. So it'll show us how many shares we're buying, purchasing them at the market price and it'll show us when our order is going to be placed. So today is Saturday and it's gonna be placed on Tuesday. So the thing with the American market is that they have public holidays in America that will influence when the American market is open. And of course, in New Zealand, we don't have those public holidays. So Hatch will tell you when they are and it'll actually have a timer at the top of the screen on Hatch, which will show you when the American market is open and when it's going to be closed so the time zone for when the american market is open for new zealand is between 1 30 in the morning and 10 in the morning and when it's daylight savings the opening times do vary so i'll click on place order and then the transaction is going to be processed and you can see that here it is confirmed so if we click on our portfolio it's going to show us we have one pending market order and it will also tell us when the American market is going to be open up the top here as well. So keep in mind that the American market is closed in New Zealand on a Sunday and a Monday, 
and it will be open on the Saturday, so one day of the weekend. So keep that in mind when you're making your investments because it's going to be processed a lot slower on a Sunday and a Monday when the American market is going to be closed. So to give you a full breakdown of the fees you'll be charged for investing 1000 NZD, you'll lose $5 to the foreign exchange fee, which is 0.5%. And then the brokerage fee is gonna be about $4.50 so you're going to lose out just over nine dollars on the fees when you're investing one thousand dollars in zd so that's going to give you an idea of how much you're going to be charged for investing using hatch so those are all the steps involved in buying a stock with hatch so what happens if you want to sell your investment as well so we'll click on the investment that we're wanting to sell and then you scroll down the bottom and then click on the sell option here so once you click on that, you're going to have a few selling options. So again, there's market sell, which is selling the shares at the current market price. And then you can also have a stop loss. And this is personally what I did with GameStop. It was having a massive jump in its share price. And I knew that that couldn't be sustained forever. It went up a thousand percent in just over a week. And I was pretty certain that it was going to come crashing down at some point. So before I made my investment, I set a stop loss order because it easily could have crashed while I was asleep and had no time to check my phone and sell the investment in time before losing all of my money. So I set a stop loss order that if the price of GameStop fell more than 10%, my investment was automatically going to be sold. And this really saved me as well because I put in 5k and the stock had lost over 30% of its value, but thankfully, my stop loss order took effect and my money was sold before I took too much of a hit. So market sell order is the main thing that I would go with. So once you want to sell some shares, you would just click on market sell, enter the amount of shares that you're wanting to sell and then click on review market sell order at the bottom. So in terms of how long it'll take for this to happen, again, it does vary on what day of the week you do it or what day of the week you place the sell order, but it'll typically be about one to three business days. And after you sell your shares, the money is gonna show up in your Hatch wallet in the top right corner of the screen. So mine's sitting at $0 because I just invested all of it into VOO. And then if you wanna sell your investment, you just click on withdraw in the top right corner of the screen, and then you will have to provide a nominated bank account that you are the sole owner of. So you'll have to send Hatch a proof of ownership of that account. Normally a bank statement is gonna be perfect and then you can withdraw that money straight into your own personal bank account. And that will normally take about one business day to go through. If you want to make sure that you're meeting all of your tax obligations with Hatch, there are reports that the platform will make you that'll show you if you have to do any paperwork or pay some taxes to make sure that you're not going to be stung with any hidden fees. So if you want to see the reports for your investing activity through Hatch, just click on the top right icon on the screen that has your name on it and then hit reports. So it'll give you a breakdown of all the investments that you've made and if you've met the criteria for doing some paperwork for your taxes. So if you click on NZ tax reports, it's going to tell you if you have any obligations for tax in New Zealand. So if we click on my one here, it's going to show us the two criteria where you might have to do some paperwork. The two criteria where you might have to do some paperwork for your taxes is if you get a dividend payment of 200 New Zealand dollars or more from an overseas company. So major American companies that offer a dividend are uh, coca-cola mcdonald's pepsi and even apple as well so if you want to know the dividend amount for a company a quick google search will give you that information but you can see here for my personal tax report i got a total of five dollars and 33 cents paid out in dividends so i was far off from meeting the threshold for this and the other criteria is if you have invested more than fifty thousand new zealand dollars cash into an overseas company so this isn't related to your total portfolio value if you invest thirty thousand dollars into a stock and the share price doubles 
and your portfolio goes to 60,000, that doesn't mean you meet the criteria. If you invested $51,000 in cash into a stock, then you would have to declare that information. So you can see that for the previous tax year, I only had just under $2,000 invested in overseas companies. So again, I was far off from meeting that threshold. So there are some other criteria to keep in mind such as if you're investing like a trader which is someone that will quickly jump between different companies you might only hold them for a few weeks or days and you're quickly chopping and changing between investments and you might be making a lot of money in a short space of time so to make sure that you're not going to be hit with any penalties and you're meeting all of your tax obligations make sure to check out this video on screen which will give you a complete guide on investing taxes in New Zealand so first and foremost I am not a financial advisor and if you need any further help with your investing taxes make sure to speak to a licensed professional like an accountant.